Hi, I'm Andrew Sink, and this is 3D With Us. In this video, we're going to be covering the latest batch of blogs to go live on the 3D With Us site. First up, we're going to talk about flexible filaments. Flexible filaments are a fascinating topic in 3D printing, and you can make some really cool parts with them. This is an example of a part that was made with TPU, or thermoplastic polyurethane, that is very flexible and stretchy and malleable, but was made on a standard desktop 3D printer. Printing with TPU is a little bit different than printing with an ABS or a PLA material, in that the material itself is actually soft. So when you're extruding TPU, your settings need to be a little bit different than you might use with a standard PLA material. If you're interested in printing with a soft, flexible material, I highly recommend checking out the blog to see some examples of parts that were made and some tips and tricks for getting up and running with TPU. Next, we're going to talk about the Mingda Rock 3. The Mingda Rock 3 is a large format 3D printer that's comparable in size to the CR10 by Creality. The Rock 3 has a lot of pro features, like a Bontech clone extruder and an E3D V6 clone hotend. It's a great machine for printing large format parts that take advantage of its large build volume. I was really impressed with the quality of this machine, and I highly recommend checking out the article on 3D with us if you want to learn a little bit more about it. Next, we're going to talk about a very unique 3D printer, and that's this one right here, the Beganova Rose Go. The Rose Go is kind of an interesting machine, and it's very unique in that it was designed to only do a few things very well, instead of being a generalist machine like most FDM printers. The Rose Go has a fairly small build volume, and is designed specifically for printing parts at very, very fine resolutions. The idea is that you can get very tight layers down to 0.02 millimeters, which is comparable to the quality of a resin 3D print. This is definitely something that would be worth noting if you're interested in printing high quality parts, but don't necessarily want to deal with the post-processing and cleanup required with a resin 3D printer. It's a really fascinating machine, and I definitely recommend checking it out. Finally, we're going to talk about nozzle sizes. Changing the nozzle on your 3D printer might be a little bit of a daunting task at first, but it's a great and inexpensive way to make a really large impact on your 3D printed parts. This is an example of a Benchy that was printed out using a 0.8 millimeter nozzle using 0.6 millimeter layers. So as a result, we're able to print a large, dense, solid part very quickly, as opposed to if we had used 0.2 millimeter layers on a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. You could also go in the other direction and print very fine and detailed objects using a thin nozzle. And if you're interested in learning more about how you can apply this to your 3D printer, how to replace the nozzle and some slicer settings to get you started, those are all covered in the article on 3D With Us. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel to keep up to date with all the latest on 3D With Us, or just go directly to the site and check out some of the articles there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.